when it's stockpiled, what's being done to stop that sand from blowing off the island? Okay, and again, years and years of, of you know erosion and storms and winds have caused a lot of you know the sandbars, the low water areas, and things like that. Are you guys going to be meshing it or containing it with you know that black plastic and sandbags on top of it so that it doesn't blow off? Not not on top of it. I mean, there's, there's definitely if you go out there now, there's uh, silt fence and hay bales around them now just to keep it so for rains. It doesn't go out, and if it does to the point where it comes down and starts to get to the hay bales, part of what's part of that project and what the responsibility of the, uh, the contractors out there now is is to move the stuff back away. If any of the uh, any of the containment areas get breached, they have to go back out there, fix it, push the piles, and maintain the way they are. We don't expect a lot of sand between, you know, if they finish like let's say next month, between next month and the spring wind to cause that much significant, you know, a significant amount of sand to start filling in areas. But also you gotta remember is right now around the perimeter there's still fragmites. Fragmites alone is gonna some of right now is five to six feet from what I understand. I've been out there recently but um, it's not, right? Oh no, we know we know <laughs> I think it was more wishful thing. But the, the actual is you gotta remember there's also still a band of vegetation that's still around. Yeah, so right. that's so not that going to be cut foot, down. You have the 10-foot perimeter above the, the that's, slope line. That alone, so that alone, I think, is also acting right. somewhat Se of a drift second fence. Point. And drift fence. The drift fence and there's drift fence, too. So, so the area where they're um, uh, you know, hoisting it from the barges onto the trucks, mm -hmm. yeah, in, in, in the front there. Um, so I see that they've constructed, uh, they have some concrete piers out there, containment um, uh, devices, and again, stabilization so that the trucks can get up on, on there and, and uh, not divulge refuge into the water and stuff. What's going to happen at the end when the trucks are done, is, is that rock and everything that's down near that shoreline now going to be extracted out? Uh, it, it is, and I want to go the plants today as well. When we do phase two, we're going to have to reconstruct it. And uh, I know so I mean, maybe the idea it's really the best offload area. So when we do right. phase two, we probably will go from the same location. Mm -hmm. But okay. in the interim, we will deconstruct that, and so it's stable, and then that won't be okay. loose and sitting just there. My, my, my third question, when they did the temporary shoring, uh, particularly on the west side of the island, okay, okay um, yeah, uh, sandbags. Right, right about there where the sandbags are. Right, right, right. Uh, whenever that was done nine, ten years ago, when they brought that barge in, again that barge stayed there, and it was through September, October, November when they did that. Uh, high tides in and out. Uh, the, the the barge kind of stayed um, uh, adjacent to the island, uh, and with the tidal flow, it actually made that side of the island much worse than it ever was, sandbar-wise. So my concern is, in that little pocket where the barges are today that you're using as an offload area, um, you know, that's the big sandbar, okay? Uh, you guys are tucked in a very deep pocket on there, but daily you're offloading sand, sand is spilling into the water, the tide, the tide flow is being altered, uh, and that's going to be, obviously, for a couple of months, uh, what's the plan? You know, you're, you're basically changing um, uh, the flow. The flow, yeah, the flow of that area. I mean, if it is altered to the extreme, are you guys going to come back and add that as part of your cleanup plan? They plowed the whole way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're uh, also you got to look at. It's also a little different. That it is sort of in a protected area already, which is a little bit different than here. Where it's straight open, but also within the bucket itself, they have the ability that if anything that drops out of the bucket that goes down, to then take that. So let's say forward force of it, that they don't leave it with a pile from where the crane went. Yeah. Right. All I'm saying is, what what's eight feet today? When you guys are done, we don't expect it to be three and a half feet. Yes. Okay. Um, that's all I have. To that's okay. Eight why don't uh, they dredge around the island instead of going to Rockwood? I mean, some some of it. There's a sandbar right there. That, at low tide, you can it's almost walk to the island. It isn't? It's not. No.
it's getting worse. You don't want to judge it. Michael, you don't want to judge it. Who knows what's in there? Well, they've done the test. The water's it's pretty good. The soil's good. Because it is a navigable channel. Right? It's it's not not the federal government's only concentrating. I'm sorry. The federal government's only concentrating on shipping channels and big business and big industry. How would we get that type of maintenance in a recreational area? Well, you did the, well, what would be necessary for it to be a, uh, first an act of Congress, and then you would, you would have to do a, uh, a study, which would have to show that the cost-benefit analysis, they do take into account recreational uh, benefits, but you know, it's hard to generate the kind of uh, cost-benefit analysis of values that you need to support a you know, multi-million dollar industry. Can I just, just add, how frequently do, does the Army Corps maintain the shipping channel? Uh, it, it, it depends on the levels of funding. But it's not unusual, two-year cycle sometimes? Sometimes five years. Sometimes. So what happens if, if you're making a channel deeper than it naturally wants to be or needs to be, it fills back in. So the, the channel around the island has reached its equilibrium. If you start dredging deeper, then you start losing slopes from the island again. The point that, back in. that some of the people were alluding to is when this island was first created, because this is not what it naturally was. But when it was first created, that channel was open. That sand has eroded the lay and is filled into that channel where at, even at high tide in places is four or five feet. The page is very generous when saying six or eight. Right? And a, a big part of the reason why it's only four feet is because the Parks Department's last project actually blocked off the channel and a lot of the sand built up because of the way that barge was positioned. And what Dave's concern is that you don't do something like that in your current location, and if that did happen, would you then reopen that channel? So we want somebody to take ownership. You know, basically no nobody did with the other temporary project when 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 that filled in over a foot and a half. You know, and, and if you guys are doing stuff on that side of the island you know, and, and you're leaving it in a lesser condition than, than when you started here, somebody needs to take ownership. So, you know, we, we want to know who, who is that? Is it Parks? Is it, you know, DEC? Is it uh, uh, Army Corps? You know, we went through this whole thing with the bridge, too. Army Corps built it, sanitation used it, and then when it was time for it to come down, everybody threw their hands up and said, not me. So, you know, we don't, we, we don't want to get into this. Somebody at this point, I mean, at this point, I can't give an answer for saying yes. And, and but, well, before the project gets on the foot and you're approved plan, somebody's got to get it. Before, before, I, I just, real quick, George, I don't think the DEC would accept that. Would the DEC accept that that project closed off that part of the creek or made it so right now it's 20, 30, 40 feet in that area? So if that type of condition happened where all of a sudden it was shallow over there and boats couldn't go by. I don't think the DEC would find that acceptable. You know. It started, oh. If it started causing filling, it would call it a violation. Right. So at least on that side of the island, those types of concerns with that car, with the current project, I don't I don't think that would be an issue. So. I'm going to call on uh, our assemblyman Alan myself. Alan, you're the you chairman of waterways and <laughs> what have you. Will, you. will you assume authority over this? Well, as the chairman of the uh, Commission on uh, Solid Waste. That's the title which I don't have to use. I think that's outside of my, uh, my uh, pay grade, but uh, that is a concern. And, uh, you know, there's no community in the state of New York that is more closely identified with its community and its resources. And I suspect that if anything happens, the people in Garrison Beach will know before anybody. And because of that, the elected officials, all of us, will do everything we can to make sure that the state officials responsible for it will take care of it. Now, I don't know, um, making the violation, I'm not sure what that means. But the, if it's a violation, who is responsible for it? If, they, if they're conducting an activity that's causing illegal filling in a wetland area, we can issue an order to halt the activity until they solve the problem. And what happens? And, they, and, and, they and they what about to, correcting the problem? Susan, correct what about the problem? Correcting the problem, so yes. correct the correct problem that, that already existed as a result of the violation? Yeah. Would, would, the, would the city be empowered to uh, 